Hey everybody, I'm Cinnamon Cooney, your art sharp, and today I want to welcome you to the big art quest for 2018, The Fairy Tale. On the mic is my husband, John. Hi guys. Each month, I'm going to be bringing to you a fabulous fantasy-themed painting that is a fairy tale. We're going to be taking this in segments and chunks, a little bit like we did the still life, so that you guys can maybe process this better, paint along easier. This is going to be a really great uh, class if you're trying to like make that transition from like, all right, I can dry brush, I'm blending, I'm kind of getting all this, but I want to take on some of these bigger challenges. This is a really great and safe way. We're going to be doing this as a marath uh, marathon, not a sprint. Right. Yeah. So <laughs> where I usually just paint a big painting in one sitting, we're going to paint a little bit talk about the process, digest it, <laughs> and then meet back again. And so these paintings will be over several sessions, and then I'll collect them together in little playlists so that you can do them later if you want to or go back and find everything that you need. Lots of supplemental information. Love all the questions that you guys had asked, and we're going to be answering all of those. John, how's it going? Really good. So er, this is really exciting. So so this year, I mean, like the exciting part of the Big Art, Big Art Quest here is we're going to be able to take all of the other techniques <coughs> that you've taught us, like in the one hoot, two hoot, three hoot paintings, and kind of mix them and mash them up to do more interesting things. Yes. Yes. And in I mean, bigger ways. Huh? Like it would be great if you had done 2016 and 2017's Art Quest because you'll have a bunch of those skills. But even if you've just been painting with me on a few paintings outside of this and you're doing one hoot, two hoot, and three hoot, you can come along. Some of the questions I get asked a lot, does it cost any money? No, it does not. <laughs> it is free and it's going to stay up on YouTube. Oh man, everybody's so excited to see you. We have a big room. They're very, very happy to do this. Everyone's saying hi and sending loves and hearts and emoji happy faces. They're saying they're so ready to go. I'm ready to Definitely. get started. So first thing you need to know about fairy tale is that each month is going to have a theme. It's going to go with our month. It's going to be based in a fairy tale. This month is Nyx, right? She's goddess of the night, wonderful celestial being, and a lot of fun to paint. All the big art quest paintings are going to be on an 11 by 14 canvas this whole year if you check the description below you're going to see two links one goes to nix's homepage where you can print out a pdf traceable if drawing is not yet your skill and also a pdf of the reference picture which is all the way at the bottom of the web page if you just click the picture it'll print out a pdf so you can okay. have both of those references and while you're there, if you go one bit below on the description, you're going to see a link to the overall Big Art Quest where you can see the entire 12 months ahead so you can plan your year. Are you guys ready to look at the materials for today? Yes. Okay. So I have these laid out, and I'll say a couple things about them, and there'll be more and more and more coming to you written up on all this. I have zinc white, yellow ochre, phthalo green, Prussian blue, Mars black, alizarin crimson, phthalo blue, and titanium white. Now I get a lot of questions about zinc white. <clears throat> and what I'm going to say to you about that is, this is a transparent white. It is different than titanium white. But you can get it from a lot of companies. A lot of companies at many, many price points have it. Including in the craft paint market, you may want to look for transparent white when you're in the craft paint section. This is also sometimes called Chinese white or mixing white hmm. so that's what you're looking for any of those will work it's a transparent white i really love the one i'm using but you use whatever gives you a beautiful transparent glaze now over here on the prussian blue again lots of companies including i've seen this in americana so this does not have to be a cost so even though here it's a series four you can get it in a craft paint and if you're new to the Quest, Series 4 would mean that this paint would be more expensive than, say, a black, which is a Series 1. And it's about the cost of the pigment is all it is. Now, we have some alizarin crimson. And again, on the crimson, and I, and I would totally suggest if you can, uh, definitely, definitely get these colors. But if you can't, go ahead and go back and do the Big Art Quest color mixing chart so you can see if you have colors that get close to this. That would be the cost thing. But again, alizarin crimson is all the way from student paint up to pro paints. So these are available widely everywhere and I've checked around countries and everything. So they're there. More information about these will be up. Let's get started. 
Oh, I'm excited. Do we, yes. ha- we have our reference there, which I love, so we can see what we're doing. And I'm going to pull out my Prussian. And I'm going to initially, you know, uh, put in my Prussian blue first. Um, I love this. It's, it is a beautiful deep color. This is actually was supposed to be a red when it was invented. Oh, yeah. This was a complete mix-up. Somebody was hired to make a cochineal red. And they thought, hey, that blood... <laughs> In the ash, in the potash, no big deal. Red blood is red. Cochil red is red. What could happen? This is what happened. And from that, we got blueprints, and we brought back Japanese woodblock prints. Wow. So this was a big deal in the world when it happened. Huge. Really? Huge. You think that whole, like, we discovered a new blue was huge? This was huge. It changed the whole course of the world. A couple colors have done that. So it's kind of a fun color. Mm. Let's sip. Mm. Now, when, uh, you know, we're using titanium white today. Um, is that what you said? No, we have zinc and zinc, titanium white. Zinc and titanium. Okay. So, yeah, someone was just asking about <coughs> you being able to use zinc white over there. And I was like, I thought that you had said that we had put that out there. Yeah, we have both zinc and titanium white today. All of that's in the description down below. Oh, that's good. To, yeah, uh, yeah, that's a good place to go check for that. And if you check the webpage, we have the complete materials list there, too. And keep keep looking in the group and the webpage because more and more info is going to be coming. Okay, good. So Thanks. I have this nice number 30 brush, and I'm just picking a nice big brush that's going to let me cover my canvas. And my goal here is going to be just to do a couple coats of this blue. That's going to be the first thing I'm going to do. And then we're going to draw this in and block it in. And I expect us to be together for about an hour. Hmm. Um, and then we'll meet back up again. And we will keep going until you guys have finished this. Now I am brushing this back and forth in sort of a smooth aspect Paying attention to those little bristle lines. Oh, excited about today. Oh, yeah. So this is... That didn't sound very excited, but I am excited. Oh, no, no. I, I'm, I'm watching you brush there. So you're using your big brush just to make the... Just to get some paint up there? Well, what I like about this, um, sometimes the canvas board, especially the economy ones, can kind of fight the paint. And this is such a sturdy, firm, authoritative brush. My brush has authority, as Cartman would like to say. Hmm. And it allows me to really get my paint into the canvas. If you'll notice too, when I'm loading, I flip and I load and I pull out. And this is how I pull so much pigment into my brush. It's all in there now. And that really gives me a hand. And then as I press down, you can see it easily covers my canvas. And I'm not getting those little pops. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that where like, yeah, it's like the, it's made a bubble and then it pops. And then you see little white spots from your canvas underneath. This brush can help with that. Yeah. Because it's such a mean, bossy brush. And sometimes you need a mean, bossy brush. Sometimes you do. I'm just working this out. I like that this is a limited color palette painting. Now, that's interesting. Mary was asking, about how much paint did you put out there? About a coin size? Well, actually, I put out uh, three uh, little plops that are about that big around. Yeah. So I'd say about three dimes. Hmm. So 30 cents. <laughs> but obviously not because it's gold paint. <laughs> So what I would say is I, I have a pretty good eye for about how much paint it's going to take to cover my canvas at this point. Um, my advice to you, another cost-saving tip is to put out a little less, not like a shocking amount less, but a little less, and you can always add more if you need it. It's always easier to squeeze it out of the tube than put it back in. It's Oh, yeah, and I have seen people, there's, there's like a whole video about like, I think my mom did one, how to put paint back in the tube. I don't think that's a good idea. It really actually may not be because your pain has started to cure from exposure. I was going to say that. It's it's a chemical reaction outside the tube. Yeah. So I, I wouldn't personally do it, but I understand an experienced artist might do that because they're very familiar with where their pain is at. Now I'm pushing the pigment out of my brush while it's resting. But metaphorically, we can understand trying to put the, ta- the paint back in the tube. Yeah, I like totally, like my heart is with you. <laughs> I totally get it. It's like, this stuff is so pricey. What is it? so pricey? Because it's one of the last jobs where you can be like Indiana Jones. You're a pigment hunter, right? Yeah. You got to go around the world and source pigment and, and deal with all wars and boundaries and pirates. I'm not, there's still pirates and it's a whole thing and it always has been a thing. Pigment has always been a thing. Like the whole history of man. Wow. Mm. No. Y'all notice that my mug is kind of like I thought about that. No, was, <laughs> keeping in the owly. 
I'm trying to like keep this in the in the spirit of the fairy tale of each month. I'm really excited about this month, and I'm excited that we get to kick this off with such a nice mellow one, so we can all get a sense of being able to do that together. Now, it's you're, sort of exciting. They were asking your canvas went up there really. Good. Did you pre gesso that canvas, or was it pre gessoed? Um, unless your canvas. Okay, so here's what you want to watch for in canvas. Don't buy a canvas that's that's made for oil. I get that a lot. I get that question a lot. So somebody will buy an economy canvas and they'll get it and it says for oil. You can't use that. Um, uh -huh. Most canvas is pre-gessoed unless it says otherwise. Oh, yeah, it's true. You have to buy raw linen. Like that's a thing you have to be like, I want to prepare my own canvas and do not trust you with this process. You have to go buy that and it's actually a little more money. <laughs> that's true. So go figure. All right, I'm a hair dry. Oh, okay. Uh, push that button. I think that's it. Okay. Yeah, and as she was saying earlier, uh, up on the website we have, and in the description below, there should be a list of all the materials that you, were, you need, uh, links to the reference images and any traceable images that you're going to need, uh, along with, you know, links to other reference stuff that Cinnamon thinks that you might use while you're, uh, while you're painting this painting. So, don't forget to check that out below. Thank you guys. Um, hold on just a sec. Ooh, sneeze snuck on me. So, thank you guys for coming and joining us today. We've got a huge crowd of people here today. And it's just really nice to, to look over and see all you guys here. I love, love, love seeing all of the paintings that you guys do. So, thank you. I, I say that in advance. Looking forward to all of January's Big Art Quest paintings that I get to see. Oh, these are going to be so beautiful. And we're really going to just go into them and we're trying to make sure, like, just like the still life, we really take them to that very, very complete stage. Oh, yeah. You know, um, I love this image because it's so serene. See, I, I pushed out two. What is that you're putting out there? So I put out one less. So this nope. is the paint. So I pushed out one of these to what about this size, and then I push it off. I, I started the canvas with three, but I know I can finish it with two because once the canvas is sealed with acrylic, it will take the next layers of paint much better. Sorry, I was going to say, what color? Oh, Prussian. We're Pr still on Prussian, Prussian blue. blue. Okay, yeah, sorry. <laughs> We're still putting out our Prussian. I, it's it's so funny. Our blue I, that was born to be a red. I just I just love that. Can you imagine that guy sitting there? He's rushing for big commission. Powerful people are demanding this pigment. He's out of ingredients. He sees some in the corner. So, sure, so, it's bloody, but how bad could that go? And then to come back with blue. So what happened here now? So this gentleman had been commissioned to make a large vat of uh, what we now know as papal red, which is cochineal red. and So this is in Italy or something? Yeah, this was in Italy, and he's commissioned to do this. And he's in there, and he's out of potash, which is like one of the ingredients for making it. And yeah, he now, what year was this? this had to have been like, I don't remember the year. You know I don't do years. Okay, this had, this had to have been like, you know... In the you know hundreds of years ago, the write up will have the year. <laughs> okay, so yeah, it's, it's okay. I, I know won't have that. the year off the top of my head. I'm gonna go look. I, I'm sure we can find it. But anyway, yeah. So John knows this because he used to have to cram with me for art history, and years are like my nemesis. Oh years no, it's okay. Names. I just didn't know if you knew it offhand because I was yeah. I'm, I wasn't trying to quiz you. I was just. Dude, like, I only know Columbus because it had that poem. <laughs> oh. <laughs> now this is gonna take a couple coats for me to get the very finished, deep look that I'm wanting. And that's something that you might not know. A lot of people would lean into the black, but I actually don't want to use the black yet because I want this sort of smooth blue luminosity. Yeah. And so I'm going to take that extra time to make sure that this canvas is coated. That doesn't mean so we won't ever use some black. It just means that we want to make sure that we have the depth of the blue, this coolness to the canvas when we start and that everything is as even as possible. So sorry, I didn't want to derail your story, story there. So there's, a, so there's this guy who was yeah. mixing papal red. <laughs> and he was, he was going to go mix some papal red. Is what yes, we got here. he was going to make some. He was going to yeah. make some cochineal. I mean, it might not have been for Pope's red robes because at that point it was pretty popular because nobody knew what it was. And uh, <laughs> we still use it today, but now we all know what it is. It's bug butts. I'm just going to tell you right now. Anyways, um, <laughs> so there's the potash, there's some leftover, but it had blood in it, and he thought, well, it's red, and I'm making red, and how big could it be? But the iron in there had this chemical reaction that actually turned it to this blue. So he had a, 
He had a jar of potash that had some blood in it. He thought, what the heck? I'll just use it with the blood in it anyway. I'll just use it with the blood in it anyways. That's weird. And he I puts guess. it in and it comes out blue and he's like, uh-oh. He's like, you know, it's like, get in trouble or pretend like it's a feature. <laughs> <laughs> So this kicks off this whole thing and they discover a couple things about this blue. But blue is really hard and expensive. Like blue is one of the harder pigments to source. Red and blue have always been kind of like a real challenge for mankind. And here's this blue and it's not fading out because there were wonderful blues. But either there were wars going on and you couldn't get to it or it was fugitive, which means it runs away. It fades. So he's fugitive. like... That's this awesome. blue can be out in the sun. It can do all these things. It's like amazing. And then somebody figured out you could make blueprints with it. You can make reproductions. And then a little bit of it gets over to Japan. And they had uh, stopped doing a particular type of woodblock print because the blue they had was fugitive and would fade. But this blue held. So it brought a whole mastercraft back to that country. Oh. Isn't that weird? I don't know. I think that's oh, interesting. That, so I may be the only one. You can comment if you're like, I want to hear about the blue. But I got to let this dry anyways. Well, Nikki said it was 1704. Thank you, Nikki. So that's awesome. So, so in 1704, when they were he he was doing some chemistry and thought, huh, that potash that I spilled some blood in would be okay, and so just made red blue. That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, it's very dramatic. <laughs> Lots <laughs> of drama around it. <laughs> I'm gonna dry this because I still want to. I want to like make maybe even Wait, a little still not more. Still so dry it, even after our little chitty chatty. Even it's still not dry. It's, it's shiny, not dry. so I'm gonna dry it. So let me see if I can. Doo, doo, doo. Oh, shoot, doo, doo. There we go. Okay. So, wow. There's even more of you guys that I lived. Last time I looked over and saw. Ah. So thank you guys for coming and sharing this with us. Uh, it's really nice to have all of you guys here. It's it's just uh, it's, and this is this is our new big art quest for 2018. So thank you guys for coming and joining us for this. Again, if you need uh, if you have any questions. Uh, you can drop them uh, in the chat, or if you're watching this in the uh, on the uh, replay, you can put them in the in, in the descriptions below, and we'll try to check all that stuff out. Um, yeah, I mean, this is I don't know what to say. It's a new year, and this is a new. I mean, like we're super excited about. I should, I'm super excited about these particular paintings because they're so fantasy inspired. Especially the book that she did earlier. That was one of my favorite paintings. So if you guys haven't seen that, uh, you can check in the links below for those other projects that we started here before this. But uh, yeah, she's uh, the reason why she's taking uh, taking the time to make sure that she uh, dries that underneath there is so that it doesn't pick up any paint when she's putting on her subsequent layers. Yeah, if your if your layers aren't dry between them they can underbind and lift up and you can find yourself like painting and lifting up color. If you've ever had that problem where you were like painting and it felt like it was pulling it all back up, what's happening is, there is there's been an issue with the binding. Lots of ways that that could happen. The one I'm going to run into here because I haven't, over, I haven't overused moisture and I'm using golden paint, so it's really going to bind, is that I just haven't allowed everything to dry. Ooh. If for you, it might be that the brand of paint that you have uh, doesn't bind well. And that can be a whole problem. So if you know you've fixed not adding too much water and you know you've let it dry and it's still doing it, I would question the brand. Well, would be I'm, my two cents. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give art high fives to all the Sherpettes in the audience here. I'm not going to call them out today because many of them are watching from work today. Oh, okay. Well, no and, quest tends to be on a work day. Uh, we, might have, <laughs> we might have bosses watching as well, so you just <laughs> never know. <laughs> you never know. I'm going to make kind of a line here. There's this sort of field of ivy that kind of comes down into sky, and then there's the sky above her. And she's just a little bit herself, almost above the middle line. So I want to give myself an acknowledgement of where that space is. So I'm using my T-square and some chalk you'd use on a chalkboard mm -hmm. uh, to just sort of go there. Because that'll just go away really easily. And that's going to let me know that I've got this here. So I can do a couple things. I've got to fade in a dark top and bottom. And I may even move this to the side so I have access to everything easily. I may move it around. And then I've got to make sort of a smoky bit that's going to be behind her. And if I can lay that in a little bit before I get her in, that's going to save me some trouble. And I'm always loving to save myself some trouble if I can. Yeah. If I can. I'm going to get a black pearl. I'm going to get this uh, big, big boy here. My black pearl bright number 12. I'm going to put out a little more pressure blue. And you're like, boy, that's a lot of pressure blue. Yes, it is. <laughs> you're not wrong. 
I'm going to put out a little of this. I think maybe two again. But this one will be smaller. That's just for the center. And then I'm going to put out a little black. And I'm going to create that top range. And you think to yourself, why not just paint black? Because there really is a difference when you're in person with a painting. Yeah. All these colors genuinely impact each other and resonate to the eye and create this feeling of being very cohesive. So I'm dipping my brush in the water. I'm going to pull out a little of my blue and get a little black. And I'm going to mix these together. And so these will work together to create, to keep that sky um, the blue that it needs to be. Okay. So you can see it's definitely darkening it. Right, as yep. I'm going. But because I didn't use just the pure Mars black, there's enough of a blue tone into it so that it's not going to deaden the sky, which I wouldn't want. I'm only going to come down about two inches with this. I'm just dipped in water to improve my flow because my paint is not gliding. And if it's not gliding, I've got to fix it. When I'm out of pigment, I'm going to just brush back and forth. And then I'm going to come get some actual Prussian with no black mixed into it and continue this fade down. Now, Nadine and that's was asking. going to let me have the dark sky. Hmm? Nadine was asking, what's the student equivalent to the color of Prussian blue? Uh, Prussian blue and a student brand. Oh, well, they just, they don't. Yeah, they, they so. Go, they're just straight up like hue or student grade. Yeah, it doesn't even really say hue. What it is is that a couple of the companies do have it. I've seen, uh, if you guys are familiar with the Americana, they definitely have it. Um, I'm going to try to get a list together. We've been working on where these paints are, what companies have them. Right. And if, you know, what their costs are so you guys can make some good decisions. Check the links in the description below for those the, resources. Everything will be just, you know, just hang in, be in our group. Stuff is added. So I'm just trying to make sure that this edge here is nice and clean. And I'm just coming down. And I'm going to have this more focal blue here in the center, even though that's kind of what I've had. Go right over my line. But now I know where it was. It won't be such a problem. And that way, when I put the smoky... The sky is, even though it's very dark, even though this is a very dark, dramatic painting, there's a beautiful blend to it. We want to duplicate that in our painting. Well, she's laying in a space bed. like the She's cosmic laying in the space bed, sleeping, guiding yeah. the night. I'm going to put out one more little plop of Prussian. Floating in the Milky Way. There we go. Actually, when I first saw this, I kind of thought that she was laying in a pool, and that was the reflection of the sky. And but then I then I realized she was actually laying in the sky. She's laying in the sky. But it's really it's really interesting. I I loved all the mythology and um, fairy tales that we picked for the whole year. They are really good mm -hmm. and representative of so many areas of the world. And I I felt really proud of that. <laughs> like we're really really telling a lot of stories. And that's what we are as artists. We're storytellers. Yeah. You know, that's a pretty awesome thing to be. I'm just loading up. You'll see me dipping. I'll, I, I, I'm going to point this out because, like, I dip just the edge, like a quarter of an inch in, and I may take off the extra. I want water. I don't want so much water that it's a pool. I don't want a puddle. I just want to make sure that I'm getting a good blend towards the center here, and then I've got a nice cool night sky i love mars black i love bone black i love ivory black they're all wonderful but for something like this their nature the way they reflect to the eye just wouldn't give us that starry field we're expecting and so this is a nice little trick that you can do when you're painting to make sure you're getting it and the wonderful thing about the prussian is it's almost you know a glaze so it just comes in and glaze glaze glazes so you can create some gorgeous effects with very little effort. And that's always nice. Just join the ombre. And I'm just going back over and I'm softening and working. You know. If you're having a terrible time working with the brush you have, a trick that you can do is to grab another brush 
that's clean and go over the top of it oh, yeah. and then wipe off on a towel. I'm going to see if I can pick up some more of that. That's another way to soften a line if you haven't ever done that. The clean brush that's dry that you just go over to soften these lines. So there's a lot of ways to get a blend in acrylic. And in many paintings, that's just the challenge that acrylic artists have. But dude, we can dry brush like nobody's business. All right. Now I'm going to dry this and we'll put a little bit of our smoky field in and then we'll probably sketch our girl in. Yeah. Sure. All right. You ready? Okay. Oh, here, dry some more. Okay. Yeah. Oh, there it goes. Yep. It's very important to make sure that between those layers, and I was just trying to adjust the color up on that one a little bit because it's very dark what she's doing, what she's painting in there. Um, so, you know, these cameras have limited ability to see a full range like our eyes can. That's just the nature of, of photography. But, um, yeah, she's making sure that she gets these layers dried up so that the next layers, you know, of course, don't bleed up through this. So, you guys know that, though. You've been here for a little while. See, this is where I run out of things to say other than, man... I, I think I, I have to thank you guys for being here because it's like every time I look over, there's more of you guys. And that's just like, I can't tell you how awesome that really is to just look over and just be able to see all you guys in chat having a great time. And by the way, if you have not joined us in live chat, you really should. There's a lot of fun going on. Um, lots of shenanigans and chatting about, you know, things that are on topic most of the time, you know. But, you know, there's a little bit of uh, off-topicness, and that's always pretty fun. So, Cinnamon's really making sure that's dry. It's uh, I can hear the uh, that she's she's got the changing the little frequency, the, the the speed of that up and down. So, uh, you know, you've been here for a while when you hear when you know your how the people are drying things. <laughs> so, anyway, um, wow, this is the longest time I've had to just sort of talk to you guys blindly without any prep in a long time so this is oh and there she is i'm sorry babe i left you for a little while oh you did we were just talking about that or i was like panicking <laughs> well so uh like right. i'm noticing like hopefully during the quest you're gonna see us go from our regular cameras to our hd cameras yeah we and did talk about be that an interesting i'd love to hear your ex difference in the experience because in the hd you can actually see all the variation well, i was just switching over to this camera and we got it much better on this one here yeah. I, had, I had to make a little adjustment here and really the re reason is is that uh cameras can either see really good dynamically in high ranges or low ranges but unless you have a really really good camera it can't see dynamic ranges in both high and low at this the same is so time true. <laughs> And so we have to adjust our camera up and down a little bit here and there. Up and sometimes. down, up and down. All right, I'm looking for my zinkles. That's my titaniums, but I want my. There's my zinkles. So again, this is a transparent white. And you know, go ahead and get yourself a transparent white. It's okay if you're getting yourself the mixing white, in, um, you know, craft paint or uh, in a like a Liquitex Basics, all the way up to like I really love the. I love Golden as a company. I love their whites like a lot. But that's like that's like a, a subjective preference, right? Because yeah. like you know, among the top brands, they all make a really great white. I just subjectively prefer it. Mm. If that makes sense, just just on my opinion. Everybody's like pretty archival. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I was just glancing over here. We just so you know, we got almost over seven hundred and fifty people here. You know, and they just more and more and more coming up. They're all wanting to say that they're really looking forward to this and really enjoying this, uh, the big art quest here this year, and and having having fun chatting with us here. So, I'm. Uh, I think this is going to be great, and I think a lot of you are going to get paintings that just change everything for you. Yeah. Where you're like, wow, I didn't even know that that was in me. I saw that happening with the still life, and I thought, wow, a year of that would be amazing. And you guys always share paintings with me, saying, I really want to paint this. I really want to paint this, and I'm like, oh. If only we had the time, then I was like, wait, we do, because segments. <laughs> yes, we do. We segments help. <laughs> so what, what are we doing next here? Are you putting I'm going to put my little line back in so I remember where things are. Your reference line? Actually, it's really, I remember where they are. I mean, the honest truth is I do remember where they are, but so you visually understand why I'm, where I'm picking the space, right? As a, above and below, you know, what's going on. 
So I'm just making this line so you see that I'm a little bit above the halfway point. Just a little, not a lot. And I'm going to smudge in or sponge in a little bit of this background. Oh, right. So what we're going to do here is we need to create a very soft, subdued kind of, kind of like fog around her. And we're going to be fiddling with this fog a lot, but this first layer is going to help us really build something that looks lush on the canvas. Now, I'm going to show you a couple ways to get this in, right? Um, and then we're going to we're going to knock this part in and then we're going to sketch her in. Okay. Right. So the first way is I'm going to say like so if you just had a round brush. This is just a this is a black pearl round, right? And I'm going to load it with a little of my zinc. I haven't even put any water on it. And I'm doing Mhm. Mm the size is a number six round. So this is a synthetic filament. It's firmness. It's 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 less firm than um, my uh, sh Sherpa brushes, but you could do this with one of the cat's tongues too, like here on the side. So if that's what you've got, you know, definitely go to that. And I'm going to tint this color with my Prussian. The phthalo blue we have is literally just a little touch for our brighter stars and you don't have to um, make it too much. Now I'm going to tap off on my towel because I don't want too much pigment on here. And I'm going to just very softly get my brush to sort of work in a little bit of fog. I'll move it with my finger if I need to and then soften it and I need it to be super transparent. See I'm wiggling my brush back and forth. So this, the trick to success with this is that I'm going to, and I may even put out some glazing liquid to make even more that. transparent, is less it? pigment, l more airy. Oh, there we go. Because we want to see it's there, but it has to be like, like a little cloud aspect. So for this brush, I'm like, you know, kind of going like this. Just trying to show this little bit of, of foggy bits coming up. Put a little more pression on there and a smidge of the zinc white. And this is a fiddly little, a little business making fog. See how that one's just a little more blue? It's just, yeah. just a touch because, because it wouldn't all be a single tonality, would it? And then I'm pushing and like I'm wiggling and I'm pushing up. All right, so there we go. Now, in, in all the quests, I may not necessarily change out brushes, but since we're just starting out together, I'm just making sure that you guys know that we can do that. Now, I'm pushing a little firmer over here and pressing in and wiggling back and forth, and you can see this wiggle bit. You know, the wiggle, wiggle bit. I love my cloud brushes, but they're very stiff, so I wouldn't be like, oh, hey, I've got to use them here, right? I'm going to want to use them in a different thing, so definitely... If it's not a round, another option you could have is like if you had one of my cat's tongues, like a number four cat's tongue, and again, I'm going to get a little blue, maybe some of this glazing liquid, and a little zinc, and you're going to see me do kind of a similar thing. I'm just wiggling and making these uneven little dusted spaces. See how we're doing? Now you could use any brush you you were comfortable with to make this effect. As long as you felt like you could make this nice soft fog effect with what you were using, mm -hmm. yes, yeah, that, any brush. I'm just trying to demo that, and then I'm gonna whip through this probably on a on a bristle or something. <laughs> now on a bristle brush, I might actually take the step where I um, I'll do like maybe a number four where I actually mm -hmm. get it wet to soften it because these soften. This is a Cambridge and has a mix of synthetic filaments and boar hair bristles, so it doesn't over soften. it. All right, I'm going to load my brush up with a little bit of pigment, get my zincs, my zincles, zinc zincteculas. Look at this go. So it's not, you know, we're not doing a fast little, you know, kind of stroke based technique here. We're just carefully and in 
intentionally processing a little bit of this color. I don't want to take out the dark hair too much because as we come into the ivy, right? Yeah. We're going to have to be working the ivy and the fog against each other. Some paintings are simple, but they're deceptively simple because they look like they don't have that much going on when actually to get the effect, there's maybe a lot going on. I'm going to get a little more zinkle. So this is just a bright with a bristle. And you can see I'm just wiggling this around. Yeah. And I'm just pulling this down. It was real uh, interesting because we had put this up and everybody's like, where's the easy paintings? <laughs> <laughs> I'm well, like, I didn't quit doing it. This is just this thing we do here. And and really, you know, I've, I mean, like, I'm not trying to say that, you know, a beginner should jump into a three-hoot painting, but a lot of these are about patience and layers. A lot of these are about patience and layers and just seeing if you can get a handle on the brush stroke. Yeah. And as long as you're willing to take it patiently with these layers, you really can do anything. Yes. And sometimes like what it is like when you're a fresh artist and you're trying to figure out how to build an idea or project, you just don't know what layers go where. And so it becomes a construction problem. Do you see how that mist is just revealing itself? It, it is. It's just. Now, these skills as you come along this year, they work in all your art. These tools work in all your art and they're worth having. You know, if you can, if you can do it, they're totally worth having. I try not to recommend, I do my best to recommend colors that are worth having in your paint bucket or tools that are worth having in your paint bucket because, you know, we're all, we're all on a budget. <laughs> there might be two of us not on a budget. Yeah. Less your abundance. <laughs> That's a wonderful thing, but most of us are. And so, you know, making smart decisions about those things that we bring into our art studio is one of those key things that we can do to really succeed. And you can see I'm being just super fussy, right? Like if you paint with me a lot of my one hoots, I'm like, I'm through here. I'm like, some layers, some layers, some layers, some layers. We're done. Yay. This is slower than that. More considered. Yeah. And that consideration will pay off in a beautiful result. And I'm going to every once in a while look back at my camera because that's how I step back. Normally, I would step back across the room and consider my painting. Mm. But um, because we're in this enclosed space. And then as we do our remodeling, I don't even know how that's going to be. That's going to be interesting. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going to be or paint. Maybe it'll look the same. <laughs> you never know. Yeah, that's... Uh that's still the bristly brush you're using there? That's still the bristly brush. My point is is that there's lots of brushes, right? I put these in that one um, Explorer set because I find the Cambridges to be some of my favorite tools in my paint box. Hmm. Don't expect everybody to have them. You know, not everybody could get them, but they are a lovely... I'm Notice that I'm taking a highlight here. And I'm just adding some dimension to my mist. So I want it to really, really feel, and then look at it. When I look back, the reason I'm doing this is I look back, and I, this corner this is very dynamic, and I want to make sure that I... It's a dynamic corner. That I am I have some dynamic mist. And so how I do that is I'm like, I notice this little edge right here, and I can enforce that edge with this light color. See? Are you saying you've painted yourself into a dynamic corner? I painted myself into a dynamic corner. <laughs> I've been making so many crazy art jokes lately. <laughs> <laughs> I think John's like, okay, <laughs> revenge time. <laughs> <laughs> but you see how the tonality of the mist is really helping its depth and yeah. expression, and and by processing this slowly and and working this out in this in this way that I am, I'm allowing the painting to develop the way we would a photograph. He's so helpful. Thank you, babe. There you go. So helpful. How are you guys doing? Are you liking this? Good. So, it you know, if you haven't done the stroke before and you, this is, this is the stuff of clouds, right? Right. This is the stuff of those shapey, shapey bits and those shapey, shapey ideas. Right. 
And you can see me like, look how I wiggle around. I wiggle, wiggle to the right and I wiggle, wiggle to the left. I should make like a brush line dance. I wiggle, wiggle to the right <laughs> and I wiggle, wiggle to the left. Everyone, everyone's going to be like, wait, what? We got a line dance now? <laughs> Only those who glam a pajama. Yes. <laughs> So I'm just adding a little more blue. The thing about Prussian blue is if you brighten it with any white, it really becomes this 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 gemmy blue. It's like a sapphire. It's it, extraordinary. I, I love the gemminess of it. Yeah. Thalo is a much uh, 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 warmer hue. And it, I love, I think I'm correct on that. And, <laughs> and it just, it's wonderful. And because it's got, you know, that, that, uh, green in it or the blue in it the blue mm -hmm. shade in it the way it comes out so how it makes that aqua and stuff it will pull against this color tremendously where we need to imply that glow that's how we're going to get it the first we have to build up a a dynamic bank of mist Mist takes a minute doesn't it <laughs> and i'm going to give a secret high five to all of those sherpettes who are, who are watching us under their desk right now they're all telling me about it in chat I totally want to see some paintings. <laughs> I totally oh, want yeah, to see and, some paintings. Oh, by the way, uh, Little Brush Angel is painting along with us. Are you the Angel? This is like out a here thing, painting along with us. There are lots of people who are, who are out here today. And, and we've got a lot of our sherbets and friends. You know, this has been a really, really nice uh, first BAQ for the year. Well, you know. Yeah. First official January project. Yeah, because we did the book. Yeah, but it was unofficial. It was BAQ, and it was a surprise. That was I. That was one of the really happy ones. I love that one. Well, that that was I had just used that thumbnail to like announce this, and then everyone was like, "Can we paint that book?" I know. I was, <laughs> I was like, like, "Can well, it?" Can, I kept what am I going to say? No. <laughs> please, 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 paint a book. No, nobody gets a book. Nobody, nobody and, gets one. And then, then she painted it. Well, of course, because I always kind of say yes to you guys. If you guys do a poll and you put a feature in there, chances are I'm going to figure out how to put that feature in. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to just, see, I just get a little more highlight and I'm putting it up. And I'm very light in my brush. I don't know if the camera can catch this. Patty's like, what do you mean under my desk? You know, when you're holding your phone underneath your desk, hiding that you're watching. That's what I meant. So, <laughs> you'll see how it's this very light. I'm not pressing the brush in very much. Yeah. And, and I'm sort of I'm going to zoom around. in on that here. Because you're really making little tiny circles. Uh, and they're not just circles. They're they're random movements. Sometimes they're a circle. Sometimes they're a, a, a sharp turn. And it's about just trying to randomize and not clone my space. Right? Just trying to, you know, get in there. And now, once I have that in, right, that's kind of a nice foundation. It's about looking at that and saying, do I feel feel like that's wonderful now as we're working on the painting we can go back we can touch up mist we can work it around her we can we can brighten it we can darken it we can do stuff so that she pops out but to have stars we're gonna have to do some splatter or dotting mm. my recommendation is some splatter i have a couple splatter tools here and i have a video if you look how to splatter stars um, it's going to give you a bunch of tips on how to do splattering techniques and get better at them. My emergency tip for right now is that test your splatter process on scratch paper. <laughs> because you don't want to find out that you don't have the mixture right or you've done something wrong and it goes across your canvas. That's a pain to do, right, to fix that. So definitely test it. Um, this particular one gives me a bigger star, and this one gives me a smaller star. And I'm going to hand put in my stars with a dotting tool, So, which actually comes in the set. I'm going to put out some of this fluid white paint. I'm going to tap, 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 tap this in. This is a titanium white. Often this is called soft body. You know, um, like this. See, that has a soft body. It says fluid or soft body. Like I think Batiste says soft body. It just depends on the company. And all, what, a little known fact is that most craft paints are that. They don't, they don't have a lot of texture. They're self-leveling. They don't have a lot of the extra polymers and chemistry to build up the strokes. So that's sort of in your favor. So just whiten that. 
I'm loading this in my tool. It is not a toothbrush. It has the Sherpa filament and it's loaded in a way so that I can get very specific little directions of splatter out for waves and sand. Because I hate it when stuff is all over my canvas and life and everywhere. <laughs> not as much as John does. <laughs> so I'm going to come back here and I'm going to just do a gentle little pull. And we have stars above and below. So, you know, for this size canvas, this is the right size tool. If I was doing a 16 by 20, I would want to do the one with the long filaments. All right, I think we have some nice. Those are those are like just the stars just it just emerged. They just emerged. Those are wonderful. Now I have two stars I'm not a big fan of. And so while this is still wet, I'm going to get some wet paint on my brush. And I'm going to just remove that star. Oh, I'm going to get on it. I got another one I got to remove. I'm going to come right here and remove on. that. But I got to go quick. So that's why I'm not. Okay, got it. So I'm getting um, a little water on my brush. And I'm going to just come in just carefully, fussily erase this mm. little area. Oh, you just turned it into some cloudiness. Yeah. Well, I can, but I'm really actually probably going to pull this all out. So I just didn't like it. And oh, wow. Like, you, it just, it just. Gone. So, like, if there's an area where, like, oh, I hate that star, you can lift it up while it's still wet. If not, you're going to have to paint over it or smudge it out or do something. To sketch her in, I'm definitely, definitely, <laughs> it's already looking so good. To sketch her in, I'm definitely, definitely going to have to dry the painting. But I don't think I can sketch her in unless I have some coffee. Oh. I just don't think it can be done. Well, I think it. We're at about uh, uh, the 40, 45 minute mark here, so I think we're gonna, just kind of giving you an idea where okay, we're. Okay, so that's about perfect. We'll, yeah. well, it takes about fifteen minutes to sketch her in, and then we'll call this a thing, and then we'll meet back up at the next scheduled big art quest to do the next leg. Definitely co come on the website and share your paintings. Definitely come in the big art quest and share your uh, paintings from this today. And so, this, and this let is, me dry this, John. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You tell them all the things they need to know. Okay. She, man, I don't know all the things you guys need to know. So, I, <laughs> so the good thing is, is that this is, uh, this is a good, as you said, a good stopping point today. So you could do just this background and uh, we're going to paint in what she's going to draw in the, uh, the sketch in the drawing part of this. So we can, we can have the girl. So we meet up next time and have that ready to go. We'll have links in the description below where you can find uh, this project and all of the other uh, components to this and the piece, pieces there. Don't forget to share this up on, on social media and all of the places. We love, love, love seeing your paintings. Um, you, know, you can find us on Twitter, Pinsta Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook, and of course right here on YouTube where you we always find us and and our and our website of course the artsherpa.com where you know we're centralizing all of those resources so you can find out you know the paints that we're using the brushes we're using um exchanges for those uh and you know a lot of people were asking this time uh you know if you could use this brush or that brush and don't forget the best brush is the one that you use and you can always exchange a brush especially if you if you're comfortable with and know how to use those techniques so Okay. Yep. They were just saying, uh, there were a lot of people asking if they could use X brush or Y brush. And I was just saying, whatever brush you're comfortable with, that's okay. <laughs> so, you, you know, if you're getting the results out of the tool that you're using, it's a great tool. Yep. I design my tools to give you guys a great result with acrylic paint, right? It's not like you, they'll explode if you put them in watercolor uh, paint. They won't, you know, they won't go on fire. And I have some friends that are doing oils that are saying they really like them. But my thought process for this was acrylics. Um, and the brushes that I pick were for acrylics. I have a Generals. Oh, wait, this is an Artist Loft watercolor pencil. I did not know that. All right, I'm still using it. Artist Loft watercolor pencil. <laughs> I thought it was a chalk pencil. That's okay, because it'll work for the purposes of what I'm doing here. I'm sharpening this, and I'm going to very, let, I'm going to carefully sketch her in. And so if you look at how she's placed in the canvas, so some things I'm going to do is I know that we've got just a little bit of room right here from her head, right? And then there's just a little bit here, you know, maybe even in a little bit from that on where her feet are. That is not gonna be it. Let me find a piece of chalk and sharpen it. This will be harder, but I will do it. Chalk, 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 chalk. All right, so my watercolor pencil is not chalky enough to, this is not the right one. 
Herm, John, I don't have the right pencil sharpener. Oh, you don't? I think I may know where this one is. <laughs> Do you? It's the one with the really big hole in it. I know, I know. Uh, I mean, here's... The, no, it doesn't have a big hole. Kid? Yeah, all right. Oh, no, no. It's not, not going to help. It's not even going to... All right, I'm going to try to do this with uh, this big weird block of chalk. It can't be done. I know it can be done. All right. It's not going to be done articulately. <laughs> it can't be done. So I just want to know where the top of her head is. And then, you know, she's got this nice little hip that's happening. And so I've got to figure out my placement. I want her down enough in the chalk. Yay! No, I don't... This was maybe it's not... not the best, but it's... Uh, it might do it. This has a bigger hole. This is the red one. I think this is um, just the most the most commonly found artist sharpener pencil. Look at that go. It's like, I have all the chalk dust I need, but the tip just broke off. There you go. I'm going to go again. Sometimes you can't see the tip. I'm making a mess. Don't tell John. Okay. The reason I want a point is so that I can have some refinement in what I've got. So I know I've got my nice little head here, and, and our head shape is always like a bit of an egg, isn't it? That's what it is. It's a bit of one. Not a perfect one, but you just need to know basically where it is. Including the hair. And it's probably smaller than you think. And my first pass that I like to do is just to kind of get a sense of where things are. So I'll make the line down and say, all right, her fabric's going to be ending about here. She's a beautiful um, lock of hair that comes around which I know I've got to deal with. And then that means I don't have to do anything about her neck, but I do need to make sure I do a good job on the shoulder, which is very delicate and focal to the piece. This is going to be something we have to pay super, super nice attention to and bring that down. And from about midway on the slope, we actually start her waistline. It comes down and does a beautiful swing back up for the hip in the line because the leg is pulled forward. You actually don't see it, but the leg is pulled forward like that, which is we get a peak of the leg. So if the hip bone's here, you know the leg's pulled forward. There's knee. It's kind of where you know the body part would be. So that helps us a little bit with the slope of everything to keep it sort of elegant and, and long and let us know we're going to let a little of her leg peek out at. Again, you guys have the traceable so that should help you. I'm going to say, all right, there's some fabric that comes here. I'm going to bring a little bit of folded fabric up. And you can see me go like that. One of the reasons I like chalk, kids chalk, is look, I can go like this. If you I don't like it. a line, I just need a damp brush and it is gone. So this is my on-canvas eraser. A lot of times I tend to paint with paint, but I know that's going to make everybody super stressed out and nervous. No. Everyone is, is starting to ask because they want to know before we go. Yes. There were some questions that they were thought were very oh, yeah. important. Where did you find the beautiful jewelry you're wearing? Oh, okay. So it, this this was makes, a ho this was for, for the holidays, but this designer is one of my favorite designers. Um, Betsy Johnson. I have a few places that, that I love for jewelry. I, look, I love Betsy. I love the if you're in Texas, Sam Moon is amazing. Mm. Um but her stuff uh, often ends up in like, uh, what is it, Marshalls? Mm -hmm. Sometimes, yeah. Yeah. So, yay! <laughs> <laughs> Betsy Johnson, she's just, a genius. I really love her. She really so likes she's an artist with clothes. So I'm going to just sort of scoop this down. And I'm going to be dealing with like these little fabric folds and stuff. So I just might sketch those in so I know where those are. And I can erase and rethink as I'm sort of freehanding this under pressure. <laughs> like you do. I'm going to take out weird hip bone reminder but you can see now that when i put just a little bit of leg right here that's going to make it make sense otherwise it would just be like where'd the leg come from i'm telling people right now it's coming from here guys and then this swoops back to a little bit of a point and ends about here coming up this is not dissimilar to what we did with the uh, red riding hood cape so you guys painting along with the red riding hood Stuff made me realize, oh, they can do this. Mm -hmm. Guess what we get to do. <laughs> so I'm just trying to talk about the blocked shapes that are happening in her gown. There we go. So I've got that in. I kind of know where her gown is. As I'm going, I can 
you know, make, make changes. I'm going to really be paying attention. I love the little floral pattern to it. I love how everything is super delicate. So that's super fun for me. I'll be refining her face in a minute. I needed size here, but in a minute I'll have to get shape. And I'm going to sharpen again. Sharpening it again. Because you can't make a point without a point. What? <laughs> you can't make a point without... So Make a little a tip okay. about figure drawing it, and I say this all the time, is that the elbows have to be right around there on their fulcrum, right? Can't, you don't want them to be like longer. So that kind of lets you know, even when you're resizing, when you're drawing or drawing from imagination or being very, um, you know, uh, abstract even, you still kind of want to pay attention to some of those indicators because they're what help us know something is what it is. Gonna make sure I have a little roundness to that. Pull a very delicate arm down into the joint. Now, once I have that, I'm gonna go back and erase my joint, as I can, kids chalk. And I'm gonna create the nice slope of the forearm that's going to be showing more than the rest of the arm in the ivy, because right, the ivy's hiding some of it. Then we know that she's got this beautiful top coming down. And it comes all the way down. Then the hair does kind of come back and make sure that she's uh, not more exposed than she would want to be. <laughs> At least not for a Facebook group <laughs> right now. And I'm just refining that. And that's what I'm trying to do is just make sure that I'm, I'm happy with the lines that I have. Is it, is it too bold? Is it, you know, delicate enough? Am I, am I, am I you know, creating that narrative in the way that I want. And chalk is, you know, kind of rough, but there's a lot that we do with paint when we're painting. I would definitely, if you're sketching in with chalk, um, not bump it before next week's class. I know. I was just thinking, we're going to have to, we're going to have to lay it down and. That's, this one's going to go up high. Yeah, this is, this is going to get photographed once it's been. Right, and, and this stage of it will go in with its, um, if you go to the website, I'll put that in. But one thing I can do while I'm here is I know that, you know, I've got her face here, right? And I can think a little bit about her face and sort of refine that shape out now that I have it. I can say, all right, I'm going to bisect here because her eye is sort of hidden. And I, I'm going to take this and divide it in the middle. That's where her eyes are going to go. And then I'm going to divide this again in the middle nose, mouth. So that way I know kind of where those objects are. Wow. For later. Um, my chalk is not going to be able to, to really put these in in a, in a, in a good way. <laughs> I'm just impressed that you're doing this with chalk. <laughs> I'm well, sort of, like, you know, I'm going to come in with paint anyways. Everything gets painted over. So this is just sort of a reminder to me about where like, you know, if her brow is here and it's here, and there's a nose and then there's a mouth. And we've got so many leaves and things coming up, and then she's got little floral bits that are happening here, which I gave you guys in the traceable because I didn't know how much you guys would need. Yeah. Um, but that's her, and we've drawn her. Wow, and this we timed this out perfectly. Yes, yeah, so this is about, like, hopefully this is more doable for you guys, especially on these more challenging bits. We're just going to meet for about this amount of time. It might get up to about an hour 20 if we're really in an exciting space. Um, resources, definitely check those links below because the webpage will always have those and that way you can plan your calendar. Also, we're going to be updating that with the information you guys most request. Check out the Big Art Quest group on Facebook. That's just for Big Art Quest stuff and paintings that came from skills you learned in the Big Art Quest. Be good to yourselves, be good to each other, and I hope your lives are a total fairy tale. I want to see you at the easel really soon. Bye-bye.